And then Mike Denae asks him, which I thought was quite interesting because this is a talking point that still exists in wrestling today. But he was talking about asking him about like the effect the internet has had on wrestling. And Sting responded, It's good and bad, it really is. I really stopped paying attention to the internet. Even when most everyone was saying really good things about me, there are always going to be people saying bad things about you. The people who do that, some of them all some of them they all all they know is how God damn it, Sting, your speech patterns are so infuriating. <laughs> Some of them, all they know how to do is rip it apart. Why do you watch? You watch because you love it. So start writing good things about it. Okay, so I want to address something with this. I think he is right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think there is a lot of good and a lot of bad. And I think if he is referring to the to the people that we would see on Twitter nowadays who go into people's uh, things and they just rip them into and talk shit and like say shit just to get you know the hot take and or to tear someone down that they don't like or be a part of some damn fucking culture war between companies as we see what's happening right now like if it's that I get it and like I, that's who I think he's talking about because if he's talking about like Meltzer or something you know giving a bad match review that's stupid get over it that's how wrestling works there's always going to be pundits who want to talk about it because if people don't want to talk about it then guess what it kind of fucking dies you kind of you need this sort of back and forth involvement with it because otherwise what is the point of it there's no it's not going to be anything there'll be no community there'll be no fan base there's no room for growth. and bef- before you continue your rant i must say and i always say it good art gets better the more you examine it if, if it's something is really yeah. really good we talked about the raven and, uh, and shane douglas stuff if something is good and interesting the more you talk about it the more you should be able to discover it the more interesting it should become this idea that like oh you're picking holes in it if there are the holes the pick will pick them if something's really good we won't and, and also don't take offense to mm. it like, I don't, I get, I get it, it's your thing. You literally went out there and put your, like, I guess, because wrestling's a different thing where it's like, other art forms, whatever, you, t- you pick holes in it, it's all subjective, and it's subjective with wrestling, but I get there's a personal attachment to it because you're literally putting your life on the line when you go out there and do your mm-hmm. art. So, I get it. You're going to be protective over it. I think the whole thing, too, is when it's legitimate and when it's authentic, there's no problem with it. And you have to be able to separate that from people who are just vindictive and have bad faith arguments and who are just trying to get a rise out of you. And I get it. It must suck, especially in this day and age with everyone on Twitter and everyone rips into everyone, which is why I think most of the time you should just fucking log out and just just post your links to your T-shirts, post your links to your upcoming matches and log out. Honestly, once you've reached that point. In Sting's era, like fans didn't have access to Sting. Like, if, if, if the yeah. only way Sting would be able to find out what fans were saying about him online is if he actively went and checked. Whereas, in this era, where, like, we have social media, and, like, wrestlers are human beings who should be allowed to use social media without having to... And it's a direct contact to these people, too. It's not just a, I'm going to write a review on something, and then they might see this, my review. Mm. You know? It's... I can at them and it will go directly to their phone. Yes, they, if I have enough followers, they'll get a goddamn notification for it. <laughs> if I really, really want to abuse these poor human beings. But like, it is that yeah. difference that like, it's no longer the case that you have to seek out criticism for yourself. People will direct it toward you personally and as you said, vindictively in a way that is just like anybody who tags anybody in critics honestly anybody who tags anybody in praise i think is even still kind of lame it's just like i don't know leave it there for people to find if they want to find it it's the reason i honestly have no problem with people who vanity search like people are all like oh they're a they're a vanity searcher it's like i have no problem with people searching out what people thought about it's when they get mad about it that's a different issue when people get like i searched out this piece of criticism about me and i got gotten to about it then you look like a spineless nerd but you should be able like to google your name and see what people are saying about you that's healthy honestly if you want to grow as a performer well and to roll it back too with like just fan interaction it sucks that we are in this like vindictive mean uh, internet space now because these things should be good. Having this connection with these people should be great because you should, you know, how cool would it, is it that you can just interact with your favourites now and you can go back and forth. But, like, it's been ruined and it's been fucking perverse and it's been it's been turned into this thing now that it's just so gross and I and every day I get... I think there's less and less of a reason for it now. Like, we, we peaked with what it was good for and now we're just in this weird, gross space where everything feels like it's vindictive and pushing an angle and just not genuine nothing feels genuine anymore so i i'm I'm really at the point now where it's like if 
if I didn't have a thing that I wanted to, you know, get out there and be a part of and get involved, I, I wouldn't even have it anymore because, like, what's the fucking point of it? It's just so gross and taxing and I couldn't imagine being in the position of these athletes um, on national television and just... Because you just you see some of the shit they get and everything you do is so micro-analyzed now. It's like, you, you make any sort of comment and, like, someone will take something to mean something because, you know, it's that's just how it is with people. You're, gonna, you're all going to have different interpretations of what people meant. But, like, the problem is everyone thinks their interpretation of something is the right interpretation. Like, they then and there's no world in which they could have meant, someone could have meant something else or there was broader context to something. And it, it's really unfortunate that's the stage we're in now. You know what the worst part of it is? The mm. people you just talked about are the minority. And, like, significantly mm. so. They're a tiny minority of people. But we have built platforms that allow them to be loudest. And that is partially our fault like twitter could be like 50 times better in the morning if they just got rid of the quote tweet feature like one change they could make would change twitter irrevocably for the better but it drives too much engagement and they'll never do it but like it's it's like it shouldn't be like that it shouldn't be the case that a minority of people should make a place worse for a majority why do we allow that to happen why have we built these platforms to allow that to happen why do we as human beings feel the need to constantly signal boost shit takes like we can't help i do it all the time i'm I'm not like oh i'm sitting on my pedestal being like oh i am above all of the twitter people i'm amazing i have seen through this it's like no i quote tweet shit takes too and like at least like twice a week I'll go to do it and like no this person has like 40 followers what am I doing why am I giving them like I have a considerably larger platform than them not that I'm like a big shot twitter man but like (laughs) this guy like why am I giving oxygen to idiots and we all do it and we do it constantly and we give considerably more oxygen to stupid people than we give to everybody else we as human beings have just allowed these platforms to run amok of with negativity and nonsense even though it is the vast minority of people like it's just a very very loud very very annoying minority of people and like I don't want to like come, make this come across like I don't think there's a space for legitimate criticism of people online because I think there is people should be held to a certain standard the problem is when it's not legitimate the problem is when it's malicious and it's done to specifically hurt or make fun of someone that's when I have a problem and I don't it. think it can ever be done on Twitter even in, in good faith even in like the right mind all Twitter becomes is like signaling to people around you that oh look this I'm above this person even if you mean it in a good way it's like oh no I'm signaling to the world like write a freaking news article about why this person did something wrong and add like detailed context there's no way like yeah 100 quote tweet where you're like in this 240 characters I'm gonna tell you why you're bad so other people can slap like and the thing is too is like. Uh, I don't know. This is two people who are who have studied either studied communication or have worked in uh, PR. Or- Wrestling Twitter is literally my job. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like I feel with every like, everything you say has to have a level of snark to it mm-hmm. too. Like for it to for it to bang for it to go off, you know, it has to be a little snarky. No, like genuine praise of something never gets big, you know. It's a, if you ever want like a point or a, a take to get off, it has to be a hot take. It has to have spice to it. It has to be a little mean. It has to be a little snarky because that's the only way it goes anywhere. You know what I mean? Like I've written things before on Twitter and like I'm, I'm a victim of it too. Trust me. Where I've I've written it down on Twitter and I've written a tweet and I'm like, oh, this is a pretty good tweet. Won't get anything though <laughs> because I know how it's phrased and I know that it's not done in a way that's like targeting someone in this way and like and it's not gonna. And people aren't going to go, oh, I need to retweet that. That's spicy, you know what I mean? But like, it, it, it values extremes. Because it's not just like the spicy. Like, uh, overwhelming positivity does do well too. Where it's like, oh, that's the mm. best match I've ever seen. And then all the people who, like, that validates their worldview will be like, yeah, that's the best match I've ever seen. Yeah, but it's also the other people who are like, no, this is the worst. <laughs> You're fucking wrong. How could you say this is the best match you've ever seen? This is objectively not the best match. Which is the reason it, it encourages people to go to extremes. So this is the best thing ever or the worst thing ever. You can never be like, Michael Shane against Chris Saban was a damn good little X Division title match. You know, you can never just say that. How dare you? <laughs> I don't know, we're three hours deep in this podcast. We can say whatever we want at this stage. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah some, someone's going to be responding and be like, actually, that was the worst... Chris Chris Saban match I have ever seen. It's like, well then, fuck. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. So yeah, that's Sting talking about the internet. <laughs> it's us talking about the internet.